Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Chapel Chats, uh, Seminarian Edition. I'm Christian, and this is Kevin, and today we are going to be going over the Gospel for Saturday, May 6th. So Kevin, would you like to read? Absolutely. This is from Mark chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows, and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers, they will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributor, con contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. Mm. I really like this gospel. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very beautiful, the act of love that this widow does for the treasury, um, for, you know, and at the temple. And for me, it's just such a, such an act of faith in trusting God because this widow who is living a life of poverty, so she doesn't have anything, and she still gives two cents to the treasury. And so really she's just putting all her chips in. She's saying, Jesus, not Jesus, but God, I trust in you. And she's willing to sacrifice her money that's probably going to feed her. Mm -hmm. But she has trust in God that God will take care of her. She, God is going to provide for her. And it's just an act of faith and love um, because, you know, she loves God and she's going to contribute what she has. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, how does Jesus look in this scene, right? So Jesus, he sits down opposite the treasury. So he's just sitting there, people watching, you know, like we would sit on a park bench and just watch people walk by. And Jesus is looking at these people as they're, as they're giving. Um, and I'm sure he sees the hearts of the rich who just are doing it for glory and honor. And he talks about how the Pharisees, they do everything they do to be seen. They want to be glorified. And he's probably, his heart is probably torn by those people. Uh, he's probably saddened by it. But then when he sees the woman give two pennies, the amount of love in Jesus' eyes when he looks at her. And he just sees her heart and is enraptured really by the beauty of how much she loves him how much he loves the Father, and is willing to trust the Father. Uh, that just is super moving. And we were, Christian and I were talking about this gospel, uh, this gospel reminds us of a quote from Mother Teresa. I uh, pulled it up here. Uh, the quote is, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love, right? And I think one of the important things of this gospel that's communicating is that it's the intentions of the heart, the love with which you do the action. The action itself does matter, but if you do it with evil intentions, that can, that corrupts the act and turns it into it can turn into this prideful act where again with the Pharisees, it's about being seen, glorified, and honored. Right. No, that's, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, when I'm thinking, oh, when I see Jesus, it's true. It's just I feel like he's so proud of her. Yeah. Because you know, she comes with not much at all, and yet she's still willing to give herself. Really, I mean, what? A person who uh, she doesn't have any money so she's not really contributing like the other people with their large surplus of money so she's really just giving all of herself mm -hmm. to to God and to everyone mm -hmm. and that's such a beautiful way of like how we can reflect upon our own lives and not necessarily giving money but what about acts of service for others mm -hmm. uh, evangelization um, efforts are we really giving all that we have to God and for his church? Mm -hmm. Or are there times where we're sort of holding back, thinking um, that we're not capable or we're not sure to give all of ourselves mm -hmm. to God? And, we're, and we don't have that total faith like this woman has. Uh, we think, no, I need this for myself. Like, I can, I can donate this much time, but I, I still need this time for myself or something like that in acts of service. And so, yeah, it's just, it's a great, I mean, she's such a great example. And like you said, just picturing Jesus being so 
so proud and loving of what she's done. Mm-hmm. And even he just he he tells his disciples that he just asks them like, listen, <laughs> look at what she's doing, and he just has to tell people because it's such a beautiful act. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, one thing that I was thinking about as we were talking, uh, the Gospel of Mark is. Uh, split into two segments. So there's the first half, which is the first eight chapters, which is discussing um, Jesus is slowly starting to reveal that he's the Messiah, but no one knows it yet. And in chapter eight, is that's the big turning point of Mark, where Peter says, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that's like the bombshell for the first half of the gospel. And so the second half of the gospel, since we've realized who Jesus is, is Jesus showing them what it means to be a Messiah, what it means to be Messiah. Because they thought he's going to be a political ruler, he's going to be great, glorious, awesome cape, sword, destroy the Romans, glory. And the whole second half is basically him saying, no, what it means to be a Messiah is humility, suffering, and death. Because the cross is really the messianic act. It's offering himself so that we can be alive and to uh, live with him as our king. And Jesus, when he looks at us, he wants to see the reflection of himself because he is perfection, he is love, he is everything. And so what he wants to see when he looks at us is humility. He wants us to become almost, in a sense, little incarnate messiahs through his grace, right? He wants us to become these messengers of God. And the messengers of God are humble and they're lowly. And when you start to become puffed up in your faith and think, look how glorious I am. Look at how generous I am with my money. Look how much time I give to the church. If it's about you you've corrupted the very heart of the gospel and you've lost sight of what it means to be baptized, to be one with Jesus. Mm-hmm. I think that's important to remember is because your intentions can always get corrupted over time. Right. We're all broken and flawed. I've noticed that myself. Yeah. I think it's important to keep always in mind, why do I do what I do? You know, I think that's good. No, absolutely. Yeah, whenever, you know, we have a good discussion or it's like uh, we're talking about Christ to others and there's just that tendency like oh that's a great act i just did and it's so easy to reflect upon that but really as soon as that happens because we're all flawed and we have intention i mean thoughts that come or that are temptations from the devil and so it's easy right after those moments like oh look at what you just did and but really it's at those moments where we have to turn to god and say thank you you know because it is through the holy spirit that those acts are coming forth by the graces that we receive and so it's always important to glorify God Mm -hmm. after those acts because really I mean what are we without the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. (laughs) he works so much through us and so it's always important to glorify God like you said yeah speaking of glorifying God do you want to end this reflection with a little prayer absolutely okay in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen Heavenly Father we just thank you We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to grow more in love with your son. We thank you for sending the Holy Spirit down upon us and sanctifying our hearts and our minds so that we may be disciples, that we may proclaim the gospel to others, that others may come to know you. We are so grateful for your love. And we just ask this, that you protect everyone, especially during these times of the coronavirus and the, the riots that are happening. Keep everyone safe. Let their hearts be directed towards you for your love. And with that love, we are able to come together with you and love one another. And we ask this through our mother's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.